The title of this message is the longest one I've ever done on a message. It really is. Are the globalist elite preparing to launch their final phase to usher in what we know as the mark of the beast? What a title. Have you ever seen one that long, Tyler? Neither have I. Neither have I. All right. So today as we get started on this subject, uh, we must first understand what this beast is before we can understand or find out what the mark of the beast is. So this morning, if you all want to stand, we're going to get started this morning on our text very early. A little different than we normally do it, but Revelation 13 Verses 1 through 4, and I'm going to be mainly in the NLT today. It says, Then I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. It had seven heads, ten horns, with ten crowns on its horns. And written on each head were the names that blasphemed God. This beast looked like a leopard, but it had the feet of a bear and a mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave the beast his own power and throne and great authority. I saw that one of the heads of the beast seemed wounded beyond recovery, but the fatal wound was healed. The whole world marveled at this miracle and gave allegiance to the beast. They worshiped the dragon for giving the beast such power, and they also worshiped the beast. Who is as great as the beast? They exclaimed, who is able to fight against him? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. We thank you for this message, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you will give me the strength. I pray that you'll stir the spirit in me. I pray that you'll just help me, Lord, to be able to get this message out and get it across, Lord, where the people here will be able to hear the message and the people on YouTube and, and other places on the internet, Lord, will be able to hear and understand this message and see where we're at, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you'll anoint my lips this morning. I pray that you'll loosen my jaws. I pray, Lord God, that every ear that hears this message will hear the message that you want them to hear, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you'll just just lead, guide, and direct us, Lord, to do Your will, Lord. Lord, help us to wake up. Help us, Lord God, to get out and to witness to people one way or another, Lord. Make phone calls, refer them to videos, anything that we can do to get them to wake up, Lord, because we, we can feel Your presence coming, Lord. We can feel You coming, Lord. We know from the things that's going on around us and what Your Word says, Lord. It's just like reading what's going on. And Lord God... Oh, Lord, we pray for the lost. We pray for the ones, Lord God, that's never accepted You, that's never been born again, Lord. So many people in this world just think that if you go to church, it's all right. That's all you got to do. Just go to church. But Lord, You said you got to be born again as we will talk in Your message. Lord God, we pray that You bless this service. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. So, first, we must take a part those four verses, to see what puzzle pieces we can find. You know me in puzzle pieces. The first sentence says, Then I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. So this beast was a creature out of the sea. The word sea may not be what you think it is. At first glance, you would think that it was a literal sea of water. But when you study Bible prophecy, you find out that some words have dual meanings. And words, the words waters, sea, flood also refer to people. So the sentence could say, I saw a beast rising up out of many people. Rising up out of many people. Then it describes what the beast looked like. It said it had seven heads, which stand for seven kingdoms. It had ten horns, which stands for ten different kingdoms that we've talked about before that'll be at the, in the uh, tribulation time. And then it had ten crowns. That means that those kingdoms will have kings. And it had them on his horns. This beast looked like a leopard, but it had the feet of a bear and the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave the beast his own power and throne and great authority. Remember that part. We'll talk about that again in a minute. This beast probably looks something like that. In Daniel chapter 7, 
It gives a prophecy also that relates to this same beast, basically. It says a lion with two wings of an eagle, bear with three ribs in his teeth, and a leopard with four bird wings on its back. And it had heads, four heads. Daniel also gives a description in verse 7 of Daniel 7 about a fourth beast that was terrifying and dreadful, horrible. So these four beasts, if you add up the heads, they had seven heads also. Total of seven heads. What Daniel saw in this vision around 2,600 years ago was close to the description that John saw, saw on the Isle of Patmos nearly 700 years later in 95 AD when he received the revelation of what was coming. These animals, heads, and horns referenced in the book of Revelation and in the book of Daniel all started in Daniel's day at the Babylonian Empire or kingdom, if you will. And it carried through the Medi, uh, Medo-Persian Empire and through the Grecian Empire into the Roman Empire and also with this hideous beast into the extension of the Roman Empire that we know as the Roman Church. This is where the seventh prophesied religious kingdom will evolve from that we talked about not too awful long ago. We've had a message on that. So if you're on YouTube and you want to watch that, the seventh religious world kingdom. In verse 3 of our text, John said, I saw that one of the heads of the beast seemed to be wounded beyond recovery, but the fatal wound was healed. The whole world marveled at this miracle and gave allegiance to the beast. Daniel also saw something similar to this. He said in verse 8, I was looking at the horns and suddenly another horn appeared among them. Three of the first horns were torn out by the roots to make room for it. This little horn had eyes like human eyes and a mouth that was boasting arrogantly. Both Daniel and John saw the coming of the man of lawlessness, the man of sin, we know as the Antichrist. And also a horrible global network. And that's the main focus of our message today is this horrible global network and what it does. That is referred to as a beast. The descriptions that these two men try to explain are the descriptions of how things would happen and in order and in what form they come in to form this massive global beast. Over the past few years, and y'all have heard me say this before, over the past few years, I have tried to isolate all the various players involved in this thing we call, or I call, the beast system. That's the only thing I know to call it. But, it, but that was impossible. It's just too big. The beast system is simply too massive. But how could that be? How could it be that all of these different things, and we'll talk about them, how that all these different things are so big that you can't even wrap your mind around it. You can't even, you can't even name it other than the beast system is the only thing I know to do. The answer is because Satan has infiltrated most all of the governments of the world, large corporations, news medias, entertainment businesses such as Hollywood and obviously the porn industry, communications industry, the World Wide Web or Internet, social medias, the extremely rich and their financial systems, and some of the religious organizations around the world. We've got a lot of religions in this world that is right in the middle of that mess. They don't even realize it. Because any religion that teaches anything other than salvation through Jesus Christ's blood that was shed on Calvary's cross is a false religion. And Satan's got a bunch of them out there. So there's a lot of that going on. Other places are things like the World Health Organization, the World Economic Forum, and many, many, many more. I could stand here and if I had the list in front of me, I could stand here and talk to 6 o'clock tonight and I still wouldn't get through the list. Okay, So if I missed anybody that you know is in there, hey, they're on the list. It's just time-wise you can't do it. Satan has instilled in them 
a pure satanic greed and a desire to control the world. Each of these groups have a desire to control the world. That's what he put in there or put in their minds. For the governments of the world, he played them against each other with wars so that they would, that they would have a desire to kill their opponents and to take their land and their plunder. He's done that a lot. Satan has occasionally teamed countries together, such as you'll see right now with Russia, Iran, and Turkey over here. And that was in November 2017. That's the first time those three countries has ever come together on anything, but they have come together. They play a big part in this role. This is very, very dangerous. And then as you see here, Putin and China has now joined up. They've got to be buddy buddies now. So you can tie all of them together now. But Satan's best weapons for the governments to use is socialism or Marxism, which always involves or uh, actually evolves into communism. And then in turn, it goes into Satanism. Large corporations, stock markets, the Federal Reserve Banks, which do not belong to our government at all, privately held, okay? Or maybe not privately held, totally, but... Then corps like BlackRock, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, these are all owned by the wealthiest people in the world. Most, if not all, are liberal, leftists, and I call them crooks, okay? Which buy the candidates that they want to go in office. They buy and pay for them. They get them in there. They got so much money, they can get anybody in they want to. And it's all so that they can grow their wealth and more power with insider trading. There's an old saying, whoever uh, controls the money controls everything. Whoever controls the money controls everything. These greedy people own and control news medias, entertainment, and communications business. These people control the narrative. Now get this, this is very important. They control the narrative of what you and I see and hear on the news. In other words, they are brainwashing us into believing what they want you and I to believe. And they will do anything to keep us dumbed down. To keep us dumbed down. Now here's the point of that. I'll pick on one, DirecTV, for instance, okay? DirecTV had either 16 or 17 news stations on DirecTV. A lot of people can't get anything but DirecTV or, or Dish Network, but you've got to have some kind of satellite out in the country where we live until the Internet got pretty good. That's all you had. Out of those 16 or 17 different news companies, there was three that was considered to be uh, conservative. And we know them as OAN, we know them as uh, Newsmax, and then Fox News. Well, about a year ago, they eliminated OAN, got rid of them, and then they, a few weeks ago, or well, a few months ago now, they got rid of Newsmax, okay, took them off, lost millions and millions of dollars, but they didn't care, they had to get them off of there. And then just this week, Fox News caved in, got rid of Tucker Carlson, which brought in more money than anybody had ever brought in in that. But they, they give in to this system. So now, as Fox News is going over the hill into liberalism, what, how many, what news channels does anybody have to watch? If you think about the kids and the young people that's growing up and they have nothing to watch but that, all they're going to see on the news is the exact same thing. It's almost like some of, some of these people here are writing the script and sending them to all the news people, to all the news anchors, and they're all reading the exact same script because they're saying the exact same thing. That's brainwashing. When Tanya and I go to the hospital and, uh, for checkups and stuff, sometimes in Louisville, sometimes we have to stay all night. So we always, of course, get a motel room and we go in there and, of course, nothing to do but watch TV. So you flip through Louisville's uh, news channel or their cable system and there's not any news on there. Fox News kind of appears sometimes, but it's all liberal, 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 liberal. So 
That's what I'm talking about. When I say we have to rescue people, it's because the people of this generation only hear what these people want them to hear. That's the reason they don't want to go to church. They don't think there's anything wrong in this world. They don't understand the economies up and down because these bunch of crooks in those news stations, oh, the, oh everything is great. Obama, or Biden is doing such a great job. They believe that stuff. And they want you to believe it. This same group of people are the ones that promote same-sex relationships and marriages. They promote trans transgender changes. They promote abortions of children even hours after that child is born. That's murder any way you want to look at it. Any way you want to look at it. What better way of causing global depopulation? The more people that they can get two men together or two women together, there ain't going to be no babies born, right? Mm -mm. Nope. These transgender, their stuff's just all going to be messed up. They're not going to be able to have kids either. Okay? And then abort everything that's born or right before it's born. Because... Their desire is to kill off as many people outside of their cliques as they possibly can, except for a few slaves that they want to keep for themselves. We know this. People like George Soros, why in the world we even let him in our country? I don't know. He shouldn't even be here. But he is playing a big role in everything that is going on right now because he's got the money to do it. Mark Zuckerberg, the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, the Crooked Clintons, Bill Gates. <laughs> Bill Gates. I don't know if y'all have ever seen it, but a few years ago, Bill Gates, he came out with a video. He was, I think he was on TED. He was a talk deal. And he was showing a little video. And he was talking about that there was going to be a, a virus that would come through. And it was going to be a a virus that was going to get in your lungs and it was going to be a, uh, uh, he actually called it COVID, I believe. But this virus, it was going to come. It was going to come. He knew beforehand. And I should have put a picture on here for you to look at the picture of his wife, Melinda, and Obama and Dr. Fauci over in that Wuhan lab that has now been proved that that's where the virus come from. We all knew that, but now they proved it. They can't deny it. So Bill Gates obviously funded that virus project in Wuhan. We know he put a lot of money. We know that, uh, that, that his foundation put $500 million into it. I believe is what the number was. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Not only that, he's now come out with a new video. There's another uh, virus that he's projecting that will come out. Look out. And then after all of that, when the COVID virus come out, they were trying to gouge everyone with untested vaccines. This is all just a part of their scheme. All just a part of their scheme. They can now track every move and listen to everything you say on your smartphones and tablets and on the computers that you have. Beware, if you've got a smartphone, it's got a camera on it, even if, you, if it's not on or you're not playing with it or whatever, beware to where the camera's at if you're walking through your house with no clothes on because they'll have it on some German market selling it as porn. That's a fact. They do that. They do that. I had to say all of that. All of that to say this. Everything I have just mentioned is a small, small part of what makes up this satanic beast system that has arose out of people with influence of Satan. Now let me prove this. Look at verse 2 of our text. It says, and the dragon. Who's the dragon? That's Satan. Okay? When you see the word dragon in prophecy, that's Satan. And the dragon, Satan, gave the beast his own power and throne and his great authority. Satan's got some power, folks. He's got power to do stuff. Okay? He's, not, you know, he's not a powerless being. God made him perfect, perfected him, gave him power. 
and he turned. He still got some power. And I think the way this works, and it's just me thinking, the more people he has on his side, the more power he gets, okay? The same pretty much comes too when it comes to the people that are in churches. We have a little less uh, influence, I'll say that instead of power. We have a little, influence, little less influence when it comes to witnessing to people when uh, there's not that many people doing it anymore, not that many people going to church, not that many people lifting us up, not that many people praying for us. Prayer is very important, very important. So Satan is behind all of the things that are happening around us right now. Verse 3 of our text says, And I saw that one of the heads of the beast seemed to be wounded beyond recovery, but the fatal wound was healed. The whole world marveled at this miracle and gave their allegiance to the beast. This beast system will have a leader very soon, a king. He's going to be the king of this beast system, which makes him the head of the beast. So he's going to be part of the beast. He's also called a beast. But this beast, in the middle of the tribulation, will be fatally wounded. He'll be killed. Be killed. And he'll lay in state for three days. And then he will rise back to life again. Daniel saw this same leader in his vision when he's in Daniel 7, 8 that we read about the little horn that had eyes. But notice what he says. He had a mouth boasting arrogantly. This person, the Antichrist, is going to be very arrogant, very boastful. Sound familiar? But this guy will be the Antichrist. And he's coming. I think he's alive and well, and I think he's ready to go right now. And the way things are going, it's happening quick. We have to be aware, and we have to know. So now that we see what's happening in our world, we must realize at this point in time that the end is very close. Does anybody agree with me that the end has to be close? Anybody? All right. Everything that the Bible has prophesied is happening right now. It's coming together right before Barry eyes. The Bible's never been wrong, ever. You may be thinking, well, what can we do to change this? Now, when you ask Christians that, most Christians will say what I've always said too. We need to pray 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And it says, then, and God speaking here, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and restore their land. Now, I believe I believe, and y'all will know what I say about believe. That means do your own research. But I believe that the believers in this country did pray that prayer during their years of the Obama administration. I sure did. I believe that God answered those prayers. I really do. I believe that there was enough people that was praying that God answered those prayers. In 2017, when Trump was sworn in, you don't have to like him, but God had a plan. All right? When he was sworn in, God's almighty hand was up on Trump, like it or not. He saw, we saw great and wonderful changes in our nation almost immediately. Y'all got to remember that. It was truly blessed by God. But there was one thing bad about us humans. There was one thing bad about us. We get very comfortable very quickly. And we get lazy. And things started looking good and we stopped praying and we stopped thanking God for the blessings that He gave our country and for saving our country. President Obama nearly destroyed the very fiber of our country. He didn't like much having it done. God swooped in because of your prayers and He saved the day. But we got lazy. We got lazy. As our economy improved drastically, very quickly, we felt like that we would be secure for the next, for the eight years at least. We knew he was going to get in there for, two, or for four more years. There was no chance in the world for anybody to beat Trump in any election. Everybody was enjoying what was happening in our economy. There's no way anybody could ever beat him in an election. And they didn't. We never thought about the demonic rats 
that they could steal an election. But they did. But they did. And we'll all find that out just in a few, few months. If we're here that long, we'll find that out. It's, it's coming out right now. Even more than it has been. If people had have continued to pray and thank God and seek God, He would have stopped that steal. Do you think maybe that God gets tired of that sometimes? We call and we ask, you know, basically we call. We call out to Him and we ask Him to bless us. We ask Him for something. He gives it to us. And we thank Him for a few days and then we, okay, it's all peachy cream now. I'd get tired of that. You parents, when you give your kids stuff like that, they're appreciative for a while. Some of them are appreciative forever, but how many of them are not appreciative after a while? And they want more, and they want more. And you can see that. It's kind of disgusting, ain't it? That's kind of what happens with God, I believe. I think He's about fed up. But I want you to keep in mind, the things that are happening right now are prophesied, which means that sooner or later, it has to happen, right? has to happen. It cannot be stopped or changed. I believe that we have now gone too far. Don't stop praying, but I believe we've gone too far. Just keep watch over the next few months. As we talked about in the Wednesday night class, um, we talked about the Psalm 83 war. I've done a message on that. If anybody's watching online and you want to go back and look, it's just called the Psalm 83 war. And we talked about that and how I believe that that's getting ready to take place because it's already started. Two of the ten different groups have already started shooting mis uh, missiles into Israel. It's all laid out. This, this whole program is laid out. I believe that is going to start very, very quickly. And I've always said, I thought as soon as that took place, and I don't think it'll last long, but as soon as that took place, I thought the rapture would come right after that. That don't mean it might not come today. God left that in open key. He can, he can bring it on anytime He wants to. He didn't say it has to be then. But the way things look, it's got to be the right, up, right before or right after because the next war, that Ezekiel 38 and 39 war, raptures had to have from what I can understand and what I can read, it will have to have happened before that war takes place and it's going to come in quickly after. All of this is taking place. The mark of the beast is also about money, believe it or not. It really is. Not totally, but part of it has to do with money. Money is what Satan uses to entice people to do his dirty deeds. You agree? All right. 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. In order for this massive beast system to take control of all the people on earth, they had to create some kind of a tool or system in order to trap you. In order to trap you. Trap all people. This system actually kind of got its start in 1930. Anybody ever heard of charge a plate? Probably not. It came out in 1930. What it was was a bookkeeping system that used a dog tag like uh, the military has that had all kinds of numbers and information on it, your information on it. And they would issue this dog tag in certain areas and people could go into stores and stuff and they could buy on credit by showing them that dog tag, kind of the first credit card. That was in 1930. Then in 1946, there was a company came out called Charge It System. And they had created a card to use, like, kind of like what we've got now. It was a paper card from what I understand. And uh, it was a, a credit card that you could use instead of cash. In 1950, the Diners Club card, or 19, I'm sorry, yeah, 1950, the Diners Club card came out, and it really took off and gained widespread recognition or popularity. And in 1958, American Express, they seen this, and they jumped into it, and they in, what they introduced 
The rest is history. They really finished it up. They really got the credit card industry rolling. Now the, glo the globalists, they saw this as a way of making money on every purchase you use it for. Plus interest. Every purchase that you make. Think about it. When you go to Walmart or wherever online and you use a debit or credit card, guess what? That company, Walmart or whoever's selling the products, has to pay those credit card companies a little percentage. So they're getting a little bit of a, out of everybody that uses them. Okay? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them at all because, I mean, I use them too. But I'm just saying this is what leads up to it. Very subtle. Very subtle. Okay? Now, this was, I believe, the first step of, the mar of creating the mark of the beast. These elitists knew that if they could get people using these cards and get them in debt, they could control them. Now you may be thinking, "Why? Well, that? how is that going to control? Well, the Bible says how it's going to control it. Proverbs 22, 7 says, Just as the rich rule the poor, so the borrower is servant to the lender. People are enslaved to their debtors. With the advent of computers, the elitists have created other ways of gaining control, such as direct deposits from your employers into your bank accounts and also direct automatic payments from your bank accounts to pay your water bill, electric bill. That's the way we do it. Okay? Cell phone bills, whatever. We now go to gas stations and we buy gas without even going into the building. We don't have to. Stick a card in the pump. We all do it all the time, right? Fifty years ago, people wouldn't have been able to believe what we do now and how we manage our money and do stuff now. Go into Walmart, dollar stores. You can go in, around here. There's probably a lot of other stores elsewhere. But you go in and you find whatever you want. You put it in your cart. You go over here. You play with the machine for a few minutes. You walk out the door with it. Okay? That's pretty amazing technology. It really is. It's great. It's great. You can buy anything you can think of on the internet. If you've got some kind of a card or I pay through your phone or some kind of bank account that's tied into it. It's easy. People love it and people use it all the time. Like I say, we do. But again, the elitist beast system really just wants to trap you and control you. Their goal is to totally eliminate cash from our world completely. They want to go into a one world digital currency. Now I mentioned that also in that uh, message that I've done on uh, um, the seventh religious world kingdom. That You remember I talked to you about that FTX, that company that got in trouble that had the digital currency? And of course they went completely under. We've seen a lot of this going on starting up. Bitcoin, XRP, Tether, US Coin, Polygon, Solana, just to name a few. These elitist beast system, these people have worked very hard to totally eliminate cash from our world for three reasons. Three reasons that I can say is probably more. They can't make money if you use cash. I love cash. I don't like them knowing everything I do and where I'm spending my money and all that kind of stuff. Which brings us to number two, they can't track your purchases if you use cash. They have to know what you're buying so that they can tell their other buddies that's selling these products to target that person. They have algorithms in their computers to do that kind of stuff. Number three, if everyone lives on credit, then everyone's will be slave to them, like it or not. Most, if not all, the countries of the world are transitioning right now from coin and paper money into digital currencies. Right now. It's not something that's coming in the future. They're in the process. Joe Biden, he was uh, on TV trying to talk about the new U.S. digital currency that's coming out. Wednesday night, Lord willing, I'm going to show you guys a, a short video and we're going to talk about this a little bit more. We'll get a little deeper Wednesday night. But uh, I'm going to show you what this digital currency is all about and uh, what Biden did last March. If everyone can only use digital currency, you know what that means for you and I and everybody else in the world? All of your eggs is going to be in one basket. 
if Russia were to send us a uh, nuclear warhead and, and uh, detonate it eight or nine miles above our country and an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, were to go off, guess what? None of that's going to matter. Your money just went, shoop, gone. All your savings, your retirement, everything, gone. If you have all your eggs in the same basket, basket and you say something they don't like or you vote for the wrong person because eventually... Everybody, I hope it don't, but eventually, every, uh, everywhere, they're going to be using computers to vote on. Dominion software. <laughs> Heard of that one? If you vote the wrong way or you say something they don't like, guess what they'll do? They'll freeze your account. You can't buy nothing. You can't use your own money. They have control of your money, not you. This is coming. It's here, folks. It don't like much being in place. You may be thinking, what does that have to do with the mark of the beast? Well, it actually has everything to do with the mark of the beast. Revelation 13, 16 says, He, talking about the Antichrist here, He, the Antichrist, required everyone, small and great, rich or poor, free or slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead, and no one could buy or sell anything without that mark which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. Now today I'm not going to get into 666 and try to give you an explanation. We don't have time for that. I did that in one of the previous messages called the Antichrist. You can go look at that. People ask me all the time, is this RFID chip, is this the mark of the beast? And I have to say yes and no. Yes and no. Here's the reason I say that. Some people have, are already and have already taken this thing for different, different things. Some companies now, real high security companies, some of these companies now, if you don't take the beast, that, the beast, if you don't take that chip, you can't work there. Because they're such high security companies, what they do is they program that chip specifically for you. They put it in right here. They can walk up and they can rub it across the scanner or point it toward the scanner. And if that is an office that they are allowed into, that door will open for them and they can go in. If they try to get into a place where they don't belong, they can't get in. If they're trying to get into files, same thing. So a lot of people, a lot of countries, I, I won't say a lot, there's several companies that is already doing that. There's resorts island resorts that you can go to. They've advertised this. I've seen it myself. That you can go to and you go in and you give them your credit card information. They program that information on your chip. They inject it in. Then you can walk around in your bikini and your shorts and you don't have to worry about money. You can buy drinks. You can party. You can do whatever you want to do. To them, sounds like a great idea, right? So this is already in, in being used in a lot of different places. Already being used. Yet the Antichrist man, here's the kick, kicker to the Mark of the Beast situation. The Antichrist man is not in total control yet. Do I think he's pushing the buttons of a lot of these globalist, uh, globalist elitists now? Absolutely. Including our president. I think he's really pushing his <laughs> buttons right now, but I won't get into that. But he's not in con total control yet, and he won't be until after the rapture of the church. And something else has to happen before he becomes the Antichrist. And that is when he signs the seven-year peace treaty with Israel, that's when you'll know that that man is the Antichrist. Not before. We won't know exactly. We won't know it at all if we're Christian and ready to go. We won't know that. We won't know who he is. We've got some pretty good ideas right now who he is, though. But that won't happen until after those things take place. At that point in time, the Jewish people will love him. People around the world will love him. They will, oh, they will look at him like he is the Savior of the world. They, the Jewish people is actually going to think he's the Messiah. They didn't accept Jesus. We know that. I believe that after the rapture, and you've heard me say this a thousand times. You don't have to agree with me, but it's just the way Mark believes. That means state it yourself. I believe there will be, from what I can guesstimate pretty close, about 2.9 billion people, including children 
And I'm going to say under the, around the average age of 13, I believe they're all, the bodies are going to die. I don't believe the Bible teaches they'll disappear at all. But, you know, we won't know, all right? But the, that, you know, a person cannot take the mark of the beast until he, the Antichrist, makes it available or mandatory. You got people running around all over the place and they're going, oh, I'm scared I've took the mark of the beast. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. No, I don't believe that. I don't think that you can take it until after he makes it available. Okay, until after he comes into place before it becomes the mark of the beast. I don't recommend anybody taking this RFID chip. Okay, I'm certainly not going to take it. No. It is my personal belief that the actual mark of the beast will be a hot iron brand like you brand cattle with. What is the purpose of a brand for cattle? It shows ownership. It shows ownership. I believe that's what Satan is going to require. You're going to have to have a brand on your forehead, hot iron, or on your hand. Here's the reason I say that. Number one, Satan is going to want to because listen, Satan thinks he's in competition with God. He's always pointing his finger at God going, look what I did, look what I did. Or at least that's what I think. And I think when people start taking that, he's going to say, I got another and that one belongs to me. When you belong to God, you've got the Holy Spirit living inside of you, right? The 144,000 that's going to come in the tribulation time that's going to be the Jewish young virgin men that's going to go out and preach the gospel to the world, those people, those young men, they are sealed by God. They belong to God. So I believe what Satan's going to do is, I believe Satan's going to demand that everybody takes that mark. Whatever it may be, we know he's going to demand that they take it, but I believe it's going to be a brand so he can show ownership. The Antichrist, I also believe, will want you to suffer for him. Which is just the opposite of what Jesus done for you. Just the opposite. Jesus suffered for you. People that refuse to take that visible mark will go to the guillotine and have their heads cut off. And oh, by the way, Governments around the world are said to have stockpiled thousands of guillotines right now, stored and ready to use. There is a section in FEMA's code, if you're writing it down, you're going to have a hard time finding this on the internet now because they've took it off most places, but from years ago, FEMA's code, it was ICD9-E978. That was their code. That talks about the use of guillotines and how that the FEMA camps would become beheading facilities. The Obamacare bill, it had stuff about guillotines in there. You know, we look at that and we go, that can't be right. Well, why would we be surprised by that? What does the Bible say? You're going to be beheaded if you don't take the mark. All of this don't just happen instantly. It has to build up to what's coming in the tribulation. That's what I'm trying to show everybody. It's the build up that is happening right now that's all going to come to a head in that time period. That's what we're looking at. We shouldn't even question that. I have noticed over the years, and I, I don't like a whole lot, I've noticed over the years that when I teach, preach, or even talk about end time prophecy, most of the people have questions on one of three different topics. Now, it's not the topics of the seal's wrath or the trumpet's wrath or the bowl's wrath. It's not topics about war. It's not topics about anything in tribulation other than these three topics that they have. Here's the three topics. Number one, they all want to talk about the rapture of the church. Hmm, that's kind of shocking. Why would they want to do that? Number two, they want to talk about the Antichrist. And number three, they want to talk about this mark, the mark of the beast. And over the years, I have noticed a pattern that forms here. Why in the world would an unsaved person be interested in those three topics? Why? Well, think about it. 
in the mindset of an unsaved person, they want to, well, they want to keep their sin for one thing. So what they want to do is they want to monitor just how long they may have before they need to run down to church and get saved. Before this rapture. Oh, when it gets to looking close, I'll go do it then. Anybody ever heard anything like that before? I hear it all the time. Ah, take care of it then. The thing about it is the Holy Spirit has to draw a person before that person can get saved anyway. So that was, that's totally out of the ballpark. But that's kind of the process that they have in their minds. I know that many unsaved people that I've spoken to over the last 35 years about this subject will say something like, a lot of them told me, well, if I miss the rapture, I'll follow God and I'll get saved during the tribulation time. Really? <laughs> you really think so? <laughs> if you don't have enough strength, courage, and care about what's going on right now, when the Holy Spirit is knocking on your heart's door saying, Come, let me in and convicting that person and they won't do it now when they get into that place you know where the Holy Spirit's going to be? With us. He's not going to be here. When we go up in the rapture the Holy Spirit goes with us. He goes with us. So that's, They're just joking and kidding herself is what they're doing. But again if they miss the rapture if they missed the rapture, their thought process will once again be changed, I do believe, from what I can find out about them. And they will be watching to see just how long they can live in their sin and keep their sin before the Antichrist comes on the scene. Then, they that do see the Antichrist come on the scene, they will remember from what I've told them, what you've told them, for what other people has told them that the people that take the mark of the beast on their foreheads or on their hands, those people will be damned forever in the lake of fire. But even then, those lost people will believe that they can somehow get away and hide from the guillotine. Not going to happen. Some people will say, I'll refuse the mark of the beast and let them cut my heads off. <laughs> no. That's not going to happen a lot. Not these people. Not the ones that didn't have a courage enough to do anything beforehand. Mm -mm. No. Not going to happen. No. At the last moment, moment when they get ready to lay them down on that guillotine to cut their heads off, you know what they're going to say? Let me out of here. I'll take the mark. That's exactly what they're going to say. Cut off, don't cut off my head. I'll take the mark. Satan and his demons have people so blinded that people who love their sin will go along with anything the beast system tells them to do. But there's a difference in these two groups. I'm going to share this with you. We're almost done. There's a difference in these two groups of the people that goes into tribulation. Group number one, the people that go into tribulation, We'll wonder why they're there when they get there. When the rapture's taking place and all these things is going on and they start realizing what place they're in in this tribulation time, they're going to wonder why they're there because they went to church or occasionally went to church. They read the Bible a little bit. They even got baptized or maybe sprinkled as a baby. And they did what the church told them to do. And they thought they were okay. But they were never actually born of God's Spirit. John 3.3, 3, I use it all the time. It's one of my favorite verses. Jesus speaking here, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Yes. Jesus goes into and explains, goes on to explain, that you're born of water, of your mother. You're born a physical birth. It's got nothing to do with baptism. Everybody gets that mixed up. Before a mother can give birth to a baby, what happens? Their water breaks. That's what he's talking about. You've got to be born a physical birth here on earth, and then you've got to be, in order to go to heaven, you have to be born a spiritual 
birth or a spiritual baptism, which means the Holy Spirit has to come in and move that garbage out of you that you were born with. It comes from the free gift of God and the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. You may be thinking, Brother Mark, I don't believe what you're saying at all. I don't. I believe if you're a member of the church and you go to church and you've been baptized that you'll go to heaven. Don't take my word for it. Okay? Don't take my word for it. Let's see what the Bible says about that. My other favorite verse, Matthew 7, 22. Many, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and I will profess unto them. This is Jesus speaking here. I never knew you depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You see, it has nothing to do with what works we have done, but only what Jesus done. Nothing to do. So many people is going to find themselves in that situation. Some of these people will make it through the horrors of the tribulation and refuse to take the mark of the beast. Some of them will. These people that thought they were ready, these people, a lot of them may do that. And they'll ask God to forgive them during this time. And they'll share the gospel with people. They'll try to get other people to, to turn to God. And they'll get their heads cut off. But in the end, those people will be saved. Don't take my word for it again. Revelation 20 verse 4 says, and it proves this, it says, Then I saw the thrones and the people sitting on them had, that had been given the authority to judge, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony about Jesus, for proclaiming the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his statue, nor accepted his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. They all came to life again, and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. This is the first resurrection. The rest of the dead did not come back to life until the after the thousand years had ended. We know that at any given point in time right now, I believe that from today, if the rapture takes place today, that the 1,000 year millennial reign will start somewhere, in my opinion, about 10 and a half years from now. It's close. It could happen any time as soon as the rapture takes place. That's going to determine how long it's going to be. For the second death has no hold on them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with Him for a thousand years. Now, let me tell you the difference in the other group. Group B. These people that I started talking about, the ones that like their sin a little bit, and they're going to do this, and they've got it all planned out, and they're kind of keeping up with the, how much time they've got. These are the ones, of course, that want to hold on to those sinful life. Even if these people could somehow, somehow avoid and survived to the end of tribulation until the war of Armageddon. If they could somehow sneak past it and do it and get away from the uh, getting killed or whatever. If they could do that. If they could do that. And they get right there to the point of the war of Armageddon were that God Himself cleanses the earth of all unrighteousness at that point in time. That's God's war. He's going to clean up. He's going to clean house. Those people would still be exterminated right along with the rest of the people that had taken the mark of the beast. Along with all the others that hated God. And you may be thinking, why? Because God can see their true thoughts. God can see their true thoughts. He knows people's hearts and He knows your hearts and He knows my hearts. Those people will stand before God at the great white throne of judgment and be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone as stated in Revelation 20, 11 and 15 through 15. If you'd like to stand, we'll get a song of invitation going.